What's going on everybody? I thought I'd do a little video today about how I write flash fiction. I've been writing for a few Fridays in a row now, uh, a little piece of flash fiction, 200, 250 words, give or take at 10%. So I thought I'd do this little uh, presentation on how I uh, actually do it. So you maybe can have a go yourself. By the end of it, you should be able to use this process and write a piece of flash fiction by, by yourself. So this is by no means the way to do it. It's by no means original. I've taken bits and pieces of, of writing advice that I've, I've picked up along the way. And this is how I, I do it now uh, with all those pieces that I've found that worked for me. Let me go ahead and share my uh, presentation with you and I'll get into it. Okay, so how I write flash fiction. First of all, I go on random gener randomwordgenerator.com and generate some words for the prompt. I generate an object or a noun an action or a verb. Then I think of a genre that the words that I've generated would fit well in for a story. You can see there, there's uh, the words cigarette, respond and historical crime. So I generated cigarette and respond for episode two of Flash Fiction Friday with AB Frank, listening to the crime scene that story was called, which I will link below if you've not listened to that or if you prefer a podcast, it's a podcast. So whatever provider you use for podcasts, you can check it out there. I'll be using listening to the crime scene throughout this uh, presentation to uh, show you how I wrote that story. And then after I've generated the prompt, I do a uh, word association for the object that I've de generated, just uh, to take a minute or two, just to write down as many words that are coming to mind, getting the creativity going, the creative side of the brain, just waking that up. And also do that for the action or the verb that I've created, that I've generated. So the example of listening to the crime scene, just wrote down a few of these words quickly. Smoke, smoking, fog, mist, uh, nicotine. Interestingly, I'm looking through these now and I didn't write down bad breath or cancer, but maybe because I had the idea of historical crime. So it's gonna be a crime story that uh, I just wasn't thinking of those, those things. And then I went on to quickly another minute or two, just to write a few words that came to mind with the uh, action respond. And then it's time to think for, for me to think what type of story am I uh, going to write? So we have a location story, an investigation story, a character story, and an event story. Now, listening to the crime scene is an investigation story. It's uh, obviously it's historical crime. Let's just take a quick look at these uh, types of stories individually. When you know what type of story that you're going to write, you know how they begin you know how they end and therefore you know what type of conflict is going to happen in the middle so a location story starts when a character enters a place and ends when they exit the place therefore the conflict in the middle will be the character having difficulty leaving the place if it ends when when they've left pretty straightforward an investigation story which is what listening to the crime scene is starts when a character has a question and ends when a character has the answer obviously the conflict is having difficulty getting said answer. You've got character stories. When a character has an identity shift, that's how it begins. It ends when they have the new view of themselves. The character, the conflict is the character having difficulty in making that change and accepting the new view of themselves. And then finally, an event story. This type of story, I think, lends itself uh, to an action-packed story. Uh, it starts when the status quo is disrupted and ends when there is a new status quo or the status quo is restored. So the conflict will be them having difficulty restoring the status quo. So we know now that I've got a prompt set. I know what the stuff that I've got to include in the story. We know what type of story it is, an investigation story. Here's how I'm going to structure it. Set up, conflict, try fail cycle, try succeed cycle, and then conclude. Now these things here, I, I go on in a second, I'll be telling you how to proportion these to make a 250 word, give or take 10% story. If you wanted to write a 500 word story, you just double it. And it's not a, a, a strict rule of thumb, it's just a guide. So the setup, for example, is the first three sentences. It doesn't actually have to be three sentences. You don't have to restrict yourself uh, too much. Let's take a look at the setup then. 
It's the first three sentences where I want to include who, where, and the genre, and use some point of view to describe the action, which uh, is respond, if we remember. Where, I'm going to give a sense of place, the environment, use some sensory detail, get the reader to experience something sensory early on, try and get them invested. And a specific detail about the genre so the reader knows what they're getting into, what they're about to read. So here's the first few lines then, the first three sentences, are there or thereabouts of listening to the crime scene. I blow my whistle to alert nearby constables that I have discovered a crime scene. So I blow my whistle, got POV there, and an action. He wants constables to turn, he's blown the whistle, he wants his constables to come and help him. The dull gray early morning light illumines the cobbled back road, just enough for me to see where the victim lays. So sensory detail there, we're looking at like the uh, the environment now, getting a, a feel for the type of lighting and what our character can actually see. While I wait, I listen to what the dead body is trying to tell me so I can respond decisively. Respond there in bold, which is the action from the prompt. So now we move into introducing the conflict and a try-fail cycle. Next two sentences. What is the character trying to do and why? And is it something stopping them? Come on, guys. So the story continues. Come on, guys. I say aloud before giving my whistle another blast. So he wants the constables to come and help him, but they're not there. I'm exposed by myself within the city walls. It's not safe. Just a side note on that, within the city walls. That won't mean anything to anyone, but I am currently building a world, a, an alternative Victorian city with uh, you know, magic and supernatural and monsters and that type of thing. So when you, if you choose to go back and read throughout these stories and check out little mentions here and there in any work that you might have read of mine so far, you might pick up on little things that I've dripped in there, just a little golden nuggets, little Easter eggs that are referencing this, uh, this world that I'm building, which you won't have any idea about now. <laughs> So anyway, carrying on with the story. The try-fail cycle then. This is the next five sentences. And this should be a consequence uh, to the action. And this I learned from Mary Robinette Kowal, Kowal if that's how you say that. <laughs> um, a yes but cycle. So as a writer, I'm asking myself, does the character make progress? Yes, but they were pushed back. Or a no and cycle. Does, did the character make progress? No and they were pushed back. So that's a particularly bleak, <laughs> no and, uh, or, or yes, but just means they have to, an obstacle to overcome. Uh, in listening to the crime scene, this is a yes, but cycle that I went for. All right, I'm here, says my least favorite constable arriving at the scene. So he wanted constables to come and help him find out who done it, to come and help start solving this case. So he's got a constable here. So that's the yes part of the yes, but. She's been stabbed to death. We need witnesses. Start knocking on doors, will ya? Someone might have seen something, I tell him. We're not gonna find who did this now. He's in the wind, is his response. Response is the action that's in bold there. Damn you, put our differences aside. The body isn't cold. Our killer might still be in the area. He likes a woodbine cigarette. Cigarette in bold, because that was the object that we generated. And pulls on it between bleeding lips. I'll stop passers-by from forming a crowd, he says, and leans against a wall. So that's the but part. Yes, the constable did arrive, but is unhelpful. <laughs> so now we shift in tone towards a resolution. And the next five sentences is, is the try-succeed cycle, and it, it, a yes-and cycle. So as the, the writer, I'm asking myself, do they make progress towards the goal? Yes, and they make further progress towards the goal. So that's a yes and cycle. Or, no, they don't make progress towards the goal, but they get something, they get some information, they get a, a weapon that, that they can then use later to help them towards the goal. This is a, a yes and cycle in listening to the crime scene. So I turn and go down on one knee to listen closer to what the body is trying to tell me. Her outstretched hand has a bruised knuckle. Near it lays a cigarette, a woodbine, Upon closer inspection, I see traces of blood on the tip. So what happened to your lips? I ask the constable. He approaches me from behind, but I'm ready for him. I spin, dodge his strike, and tackle him to the ground. 
he struggles, but I am too strong. So, yes, and he's trying to find out who done it. I'll get some information. So he's looked at the crime scene and found some clues. So yes, he's made progress. And he's overpowered the suspect. So that's a yes and cycle. Just a side note here, try, fail, try, fail. So I write horror, so I could write a bleak story with two try, fail cycles, two no and cycles uh, effectively. Or I could use the yes, but yes, they made progress, but something happened or no, they didn't make progress but they got something that might help them make progress and then follow it by no and they got pushed back right or you could offer a little bit of hope try succeed then try fail you could say yes and they got even more pro made even more progress towards the the goal and then no and they got pushed back further so you can start off oh there's some hope it's going to solve the case no and also was pushed even further back. I could even say uh, no, and then, and they were pushed further back, and then no, but and end on a bit of a cliffhanger where there's a little bit of hope. No, but they did get something which they could use to help them solve the case, or help them defeat the bad guy. But that's going to be the end of the story, so that just leaves unanswered questions for the reader. You know what happened next, uh, etc. Could lead into part two of the story sequel piece of flash fiction you can actually play around with these combinations and to how however suits you and the story you're trying to tell so anyway let's conclude this story final three sentences tie the story off in a neat and satisfying way so flash fiction is really it's a really quick win it's a you know short it's effective it, it's punchy and and this is where we can really like you know wrap it up and it, and it just feels satisfying. It feels like a complete story now. And we do the same things that we did at the beginning. Who, where, and the genre. If you can fit that in, if it makes sense to. Again, it's not, don't be too restrictive on yourself. So here's how this, listening to the crime scene ends. I hear more constables arrive. He blew the whistle at the beginning. This is what he wanted in the first place. I turned to the body. I listened to your, I listened to your message. My response, I got him. Response, respond was the prompt, the action. So yeah, that's how uh, that's listening to the crime scene. That's how I structured it. That's how I wrote it. That was uh, what went into the the, uh, that, the writing of that story. The end. Like I said, I'll link that story in the description below if you want to listen to that. If you've not listened to it already. In the next few months, I'm starting a newsletter. I'll be writing an article in the newsletter. Of keeping you all up to date with bits and pieces that I'm writing and, and like I just mentioned about the world that I'm building, this alternative Victorian city where my stories are going to take place. So, that, so there's that. There'll be book recommendations in the newsletter. Talk, talk about uh, hot, mainly horror, but stuff that I'm watching, uh, films, TV, uh, stuff that I'm reading. Uh, keep you all in. It's just going to be a bit of closer access to me and, and what I'm getting up to in terms of writing and, and, and doing privately. Uh, I'm also going to be asking, I want, want it to be a bit interactive. I'm going to be asking something in every issue, which will probably month, probably be monthly. And then at the start of the next issue, we'll discuss some of your questions or comments that you've made. And uh, that's going to be the format to begin with. And then we'll iron out any creases along the way. But if you want to join that, there's a link down below. Uh, free to join. Uh, and I'll see you in there. If you like Gaslamp Power and Gaslamp Fantasy, then consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.